Live from San Antonio, Texas, this is In the Building with Mike Taylor and Rudy J. Oh, man, look at that. Is it, oh, there we go. It's working. Day two of Rudy away. I'm just glad that in this six-figure gig he's got now with the Air yeah. Force, he's still continuing to do shows with us. Thank you, Rudy. Hey, man. We have an obligation to mm-hmm. Texas Cheer Liquor, Orlando Kell. Damn right we do. And, most importantly, and our Thunderdome. Okay, Thunderdome. thank you. Let's talk about that for a minute, shall we? What's up? What you want to talk about? You and you, I don't know what this to be uncomfortable because you and I have ever, oh, never shit. actually brought this up. What? You know, Thunderdome is an old Taylor show thing from the ticket. Mm-hmm. You just you just adopted it. I mean, because I'm a team just, player. I know, but it ain't got to be about me. It ain't got to be about me. Ain't be about me. I ain't Draymond Green. You know, I'm a team uh, player. I literally discussed this on the very first show. We, we did? did? Yes. I don't remember that at all. <laughs> I've been drinking. I know. <laughs> I've been drinking. I've been does, drinking. Does I your dong you lean to the left, Mike? What's that? <laughs> what? Does your dong lean to the left? It does. <laughs> okay, that explains Wait. why you can never get center on, on the camera. <laughs> how's, uh, Wrong how's that? Way. How's that? There you no, go. A little bit back. There we go. Okay, there you go. But my dong does lean to the left. It happens. You huh. need to start I, stroking with the other hand. Make Jesus. up for it. Oh, dude. Is that how we started on. today? So, see, Sorry. I actually thought you were about to make a really intelligent medical Me too. point. About how a left-leaning penis leads to certain behavior characteristics. Versus a, <laughs> kind of like a right-brain, left-brain type thing. Hey, I thought it, you just there might be some me, science behind. It. I mean, that's we have left brain, right brain. Some people are right handed, some people are left handed, and left handers have different characteristics. Like, haven't we had like a, a big percent of our presidents in our in this country's history have been left handers? Really? Yeah, hmm. I guess because left handers uh, tend to be overachievers because they're in a right hand man's world, so they have to compensate and they wind up actually better human beings for. Oh, so I've read. Like, oh, so you mean like black people? No, just left-handers. No, I, yeah. Anyway, not like LG. Oh, oh, you mean I'm like black people? Like, oh, because black people are the left-handed <laughs> people. Of, oh, overachievers. Well, y'all have to because you, but you're born behind the eight ball, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, that went over your head like a carry-on. Y'all hey, have LG. to do more. The black man has to no. overachieve. Don't do that. Don't do that. <laughs> Don't get me in trouble. LG, how did you know Mike's been drinking? What are the signs? How did you know? Uh, How can you just, tell? You can tell. It just see, I, his, you his know, demeanor. See, see, so you've known him fifteen years, and you knew right away he's had a few. I didn't. I didn't pick up on it. I haven't been oh, around. Yeah, him yeah. I can tell by the way he talks. <laughs> he's a little more That's laid true. back. More laid back. The Fort Worth accent flies out <laughs> easier. You know, I, when okay. I got into broadcasting, I tried to shake my North Texas accent, and it's just right. not, after a while, I oh, thought, you know what's not going to happen. Fuck it. No. Yeah. So, but when I've been drinking, it comes out a little, a little bit more, a little, <laughs> little, little, little bit more. So, that's, yeah. That's good the evening. Of doing these shows at night. Golly, you get to how's see drunk that? Taylor more often? Or, or you get to see Rudy fall asleep on camera. Okay, so here's the thing. You dude, so Rudy's up in Vegas. He's being a talk about being a team player. My God. We don't dude. have to do four hours tonight, dude. We can go dude, forty five hey, minutes, man. Hey man, we get uh we have we got people that look forward to this. We got people that this gets them through their day. They look forward to clicking on Love You Hard TV. Right here, take a screenshot crazy. of this. Get that through your day. Yeah. There I you want go. you to. That's I need go. you to shave that left nipple. I'm not Just shaving. <laughs> shave no, I'm not shaving. Dog. I've got Please. hair here, and I got I, this little. My, I got this little patch here. It's like a little, a little runway. I shaved my chest before I left to Vegas. It's not manly to shave your chest. It's I don't. Look, I don't look manly. It's not. It's just nasty though. To, I hate seeing the hair on my chest, so I shave it. 
what do you shave your balls? Um, no, trim I did. I like. I I did the top. I did the top part one time before we went to Port A, and the yeah. grow back and the grow back was it hurt. It was too prickly. I didn't like it. Mm. Oh, you'll get used to that. Dude. I didn't like that. Yeah, you gotta just. Try I'm talking about the top of the bladder. Yeah, 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 yeah. Women yeah. are used to that. Women are used to yeah. shaving, and then it gets Women prickly, are. and they shave again. Right. I don't no, see I, how I, you I, shave your balls without cutting yourself. Yeah. Oh, I've got a real I'm cool not, thing. <clears throat> so I'm I don't not shave them. my balls. Ever. Okay, I don't. There, I, there, there's some hair there, but not nearly <laughs> as much as there would be if I didn't trim them. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Time I trim out. my sack. Time, yeah. Time out. Double dribbling. Illy, fucking. <laughs> Raymond holding, Green has been ejected. Holding on the play. <laughs> Hip drop tackle. Hold Are up. you being serious right now, Mike? Mm-hmm. I like a smooth nut sack. It feels LG. good in my hand. It yeah, does. LG. LG, he's been drinking. It's sexy. Yeah. No, I really do, though. <laughs> it's sexy. Okay, to LG's point about it being sensitive down there, you don't want to cut yourself. Yeah. For yeah. sure, no question. So this I, is razor I, or clippers? Well, I, there's this little manscaper that I get at Target. Oh, okay. It's not like it's super fancy. It's like 20 bucks maybe. And it's got different heads on it. It's got one that looks like a mm -hmm. one's a nose one's a nose trimmer. You shove it up there and it, it, it's circular and it rips all the nose hair out. So it's, like it's clippers basically. Yeah, but then the, there's yeah. another head you put on this thing. And it looks like a little, it's a tiny little razor, but it's real soft and it's for sensitive areas. Uh, that was a drop. And I, I, I used it to get all the stuff off the top, you know, north north of the penile, like you did. <laughs> but then I also get down there and get that sack to it and get a little bit of that taint, to be honest with you. You can't have all yeah. that down. I got to go between between the thigh and the, and the sack. You got to get rid of the hair there because that's... I agree, it's gross. builds up. It, 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 it does get funky, and no woman wants to put her face down there if you're going to have fun. So I do this for Nina. I can just picture Mike bent over in front of a mirror. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I go into so I go into the bathroom and I hike one leg up on the counter and do it like that. Hey. Has Nina seen you doing this? God no. No, no, no. She doesn't no. need to see that. Although she'd probably think it was hilarious and then talk about it for twenty minutes on yeah, our other show. It'll be the next yeah. episode of Pickles wow. for Dinner, that's for sure. Once sure. once a week I get reminded this is what I signed up for when I decided <laughs> to join Lucky <laughs> Pot. Hey, a memory of not being saddled down by or strapped down by the <laughs> FCC and yeah, we're program buddies, directors man. We're and whatnot. About it all. <laughs> I'm not going to get these. I can't get these three minutes of my life back. LG's talking about between the thigh and the sack, and this guy's talking about his taint. Well, that's Dude. where the Fermunda cheese is. You got to take that's care correct. of that area. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. You make sure if you, yeah, like I'll, that's how I, sometimes I check to see if I need a shower. I'll just put a finger down there and smell it. Oh, shit, it's shower time. Well, y'all are mad at me because I tell the truth about what men do. Y'all don't want to know <laughs> about it. Stop giving out our secrets. <laughs> yeah dude some of that shit is like brother that's bro code yeah, of course we're all of bros course we all, of course we all do that but I, we've just never said it out loud oh well i'm an honest guy you know i we're all bros here we're we're, on, we're in the trust tree that's another <laughs> thing when mike's drunk the filter becomes less and less no, the, curtain, that, yeah. the curtain gets pulled back even further yeah because even sober he's crazy mother father <laughs> Just I just don't have, down I just drunk. don't, you know, I just don't care. I don't, I don't know. I've, I don't, there's something that I'm missing chemically, probably that like there's something in your brain that says, okay, here's where you should stop. Mm -hmm. Don't say that. Even if you're thinking that you don't have to share all your thoughts. Right. I have, I have a leak in, I have a leak in that valve in my That's, head. And, and it makes for, um, I can't even say airway beauty. I can just say for the internet. It makes for internet go internet goal. Thank you. I appreciate it. Sorry for derailing the show by bringing up your yeah. dating dong. Right Dude, okay. yeah. LG started this shit. No, I didn't. But I, I, I was I just took being a smart ass because he wasn't but, center. After we got center, he just he got off center right when the show started. 
But LG, dude, that lets me know y'all are bro, bro. Y'all are bros for real. Because as soon as the show started, LG was like, "Oh, this motherfucker's drunk." Left leaning, <laughs> left leaning penis versus. I, I, this show is enlightening because it'll it'll trigger thoughts that I don't have answers to, and I like. I, I feel get, like I get there's somebody we have to ask. There's right someone lean. we can ask. Mine tends about to that. go to the right. To tell you the truth. No shit. Okay, but yeah. you're right-handed, so you probably masturbate left hand, right-handed. Nah, I'm ambidextrous. I'm, oh, I'm okay, cool. It creates mostly no, but mostly left, honestly. Yeah. Really? I'm, I'm yeah. straight up six o'clock. Six really? O'clock, Shoot o'clock. down the middle, huh? Okay. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Well, my thing is, you know, here. Well, I don't think thing, any of those. I don't think I can be trusted. If it doesn't go one way or the other, I don't know if you can be trusted. Now, when it, when you're excited and you're in a sexual mood, it all goes straight north. Oh, when yeah, yours hangs yeah. straight down when you're flaccid. Yeah. That's a drop. Now, I go lefty, baby. Yeah, righty, righty here. Yeah, right hand. <laughs> so lefty, low, right I don't know, dude. But I'm going to look into that. Maybe it has nothing to do with years of like holding it with a particular hand. Maybe there's something to be said for the left-leaning penile versus the right-leaning pen. So I'm going to go research this in the off-season. What if one ball hangs lower than the other? I've got that, too. That's, that's normal. I think that's normal. Okay. I think. I've okay, got cool. that, too. My, I was it's funny. I so I lean left, and my left nut hangs down lower. It's hmm. not like it's like obvious, but it does. It skews that way. It's like my politics. It's center left. (laughs) I think that means it's like one is used more than the other. The one that's that's used less Hmm. is heavier. No shit. I'm not. That could be. No, but I mean. How do you control? I I guess you have no control. Which one? You don't have no no control. I can see that. He's just heavier. He's like, yo, man, we'll never get to shoot our shot. <laughs> I've been, uh, I'm, about? I'm being uh, <laughs> handed a three by five card by Thunderdome Anonymous. Y'all know him. What do you mean? Okay. Okay. I think I'm chiming in to give you shit. As, as you know, I'm on the road and may not watch all the shows live. Caught one today and now. We're nine days out from the barbecue, and you didn't mention this this morning on the show. I wasn't sure the first. Okay. Oh, okay. I didn't get. He's mad because I didn't mention the barbecue. <laughs> and he sent you me did. pictures. Of, he sent me pictures of little kids that we have helped at our barbecue over the years. Oh, well, I don't know about. I don't know There's about this segue, Mike. I don't know about this segue. There was no segue there. <laughs> Jesus. So There's kids. In- <laughs> This is part of the new kitchen we helped build last year. These are he's our up, kids. Well, that leads into the see the new basketball gym in the distance there. Yeah, he's just no. trying to give. He's giving me shit. Uh, you'll, he's giving me crap because I guess the bar, I mean, it, at this point now, I mean, it's just about trying to sell loose tickets. I mean, the sponsorships are in. The teams are signed up. There's not a whole lot left to do except you pray. Say, good weather. You know, and invite you, up. You, you know how I would have responded to that text. With a picture of a dumpster, paid he, for. It's just the same dude. Oh well, he can say what he wants. <laughs> yeah, he's a donor. <laughs> yeah, the donor can dictate oh, hey, who the next head hey, coach is going to well, be. Guess what? He can say what he wants. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. Yeah. Talk. Hey, yeah, you're right, sir. I don't know your name, but you're right. We're like a college <laughs> athletic department in here. Our, our boosters get say. Uh, so there it is. We're talking barbecue. It's uh, my God. It's a week from Saturday. <sighs> I just want to get to it, you know, because I'm always so nervous that it's going to fail. Dude, I, that's how I am get, with everything. You need to cut that shit out. Mm. This shit's been a this. It's only gone up every year. So I don't. I, yeah, I know. That's I, part I'm of confused. the problem. I'm confused at the the worry. That's kind of the that's part of the problem because it because now you got to last year was twenty five this year you got to do thirty right dude see I don't do you I don't know I mean I don't I don't sweat that I mean I it's like when we started this thing off five years ago I'm not kidding I was just talking, if we can get forty dudes and we all get go to somebody's house and we make maybe we get eight hundred bucks 
and I just go hand a wad of cash to the Salvation Army. That's really all I meant to do. For, to, for it to turn into this Taylor Palooza that it turned into was way beyond anything I ever thought it was going to be. So that's why the higher the bar, the higher the expectation. And I don't need that. Again, I'm a TCU fan. I'm an, I like eight and four. I, I just I want everything to be eight and four. I can't handle twelve and zero. <laughs> yeah. I don't want to be two and ten. Yeah, yeah, I, it's yeah. hard to handle twelve and zero. I don't do well. Yeah. I, eight and four is my my jam. Dude, man, twenty five thousand dollars for you know anything. Come on, I know. man. I know. I know because I know how hard it is doing that. Because I've done the golf tournaments and. It's not easy, dude. And you, you know, oh. and thank God you have a committee. I never had no committee thank of people. Thank That's God. the next step. I need to get a committee. Cause when's your golf tournament? I, we'll, I forgot. We'll, we'll, we'll figure it. We'll figure it out. Okay. Now. Let's get, let's get through the cookout and then we'll okay. do that. All yeah. right. So it's a week from Saturday Yeah. over at uh, the boys and girls club, the Salvation Army boys and girls club. People get that confused still. The Salvation Army has its own Boys and Girls Club. It's not affiliated with Boys and Girls of America. And it's right. over right there off Woodlawn Lane on Peacock Avenue, right there out there in that soccer field is where we have our barbecue every year. And this year, it's a week from this Saturday, April 6th. When's the, uh, the eclipse? On the 8th or the 9th? That on Monday. Uh, okay, cool. I don't. Eighth. I'm not a nerd. I have no idea. I think it's the 8th. So the world won't come to an end until at least after the barbecue's over. Oh. Okay, so that's good. We're protected. In case the world comes to an end, it's not till, it's not till Monday the 8th, so that's good. Buy tickets at the Salvation Army San Antonio website. You will see the logo for the barbecue, similar to the one LG showing on the screen right now. And please buy plates and come up and show up to the barbecue a week from Saturday. All right. Uh, what do you got? You want, you want, you want, you want to do it? We're, we're doing this show on Thursday night. Oh, you're Your so Carolina tough. Tar Heels are no boss. Dude, that's why, you know, at, at some Get point, the out here. when okay. you haven't, when you really haven't paid attention at some point, it'll show. Yeah, oh, dude. We and now suck. we're to, now we're to that point where it's like, damn, yeah, your bracket really stinks. You know, I started the first day out 14 and two, cause it's, it's easy. But when yeah. you get to this, when you get to the meat and potatoes, like we're at right now, yeah. 16 and, Speaking of Vegas, is starting to it's starting to get packed now. You know, I got here last All night. Right. When I got here Wednesday night, and it was fine. Now tonight, it's a whole different it's a whole different scene here. And then there's some foodie shit, and then some fight. But yeah, man. Uh, so down goes to the Tar Heels. Who they lose to? Uh, the the Roll Tiders. Yep, Alabama Los guy. And then Alabama. Diego, so, so Alabama. L so LGs. <laughs> Championship LG's, pick went uh, down, and so and so did mine. But I mean, if my guys go down tomorrow night, you know, yeah. who's your who's your champ? Houston. Oh, H Town. Yeah, H Town, baby, baby. I only got I one think that, team left in the final four, here. so. <laughs> uh, hey, LG had a tough night. He I picked San got, Diego to go to the final four too. I just got Dukey left in the final four. I think. Oh, uh, it looks like Iowa State's going to get beat. I've got them in my final four. See, we all see. Hell yeah. I need you to lose. Golly, man. Let's see what else. So, uh, Arizona got beat too tonight, LG. You're damn near out of teams, Holmes. Damn. Okay. I'm just sitting That's here going through it. Picking all favorites. If Tennessee, you, you know, well, I mean, if. So let's just look at it. So, you've got Duke yeah, left in your it. final four. Yeah, that's it. Who I got? Uh, let's see, Rudy. Okay, well, UConn. Okay, I still got Marquette. You got, well, UConn advanced tonight. All right. All right. And, that, and that's three points, dude. Uh, Iowa State's in trouble. They're down. They're down six points with seventeen seconds right. to play. I picked Iowa State. I have no idea. Carolina yeah. got beat. Oh man! Look at oh, and Arizona got beat. So you're out of you're out of teams on that side of the bracket. Jeez. Shit. You got two of your final four out, and your national champion is out. Hey, relax. Don't say like it so you said. Loud. Our lack of knowledge is now starting to show. <laughs> All right, so I got UConn tonight. Yeah, you got UConn, uh, but I know you had Arizona. I know you did. 
I had no. I see. I had I had Baylor beating uh, oh, Dayton so in you, that round. Yeah, really you've screwed. been out on that side. So, Mile, I can win the tournament if Creighton goes to the Final Four and Houston does too, because neither one of y'all have those two in there. I'll clinch before the Final Four if that if that happens. But those are both those games are tomorrow, so we'll have to see. E tough night. Unless Illinois, unless Iowa State pulls off a, a miracle. Update now. Yeah, Twelve seconds to go. Nine seconds to play. Iowa State down six. Yeah, it looks like Iowa State's done. I didn't watch the Big Ten, man. Well, no. Damn. What it is is we didn't watch the Big East because you still got UConn, still got Creighton, still got Marquette. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we'll see. I mean, UConn advance. We'll see what Marquette and Creighton do. LG, you picked Illinois to advance this far, so you get that's the, you do get that victory tonight. Oh, so Fudge. did I lose my lead? Obviously. Um, oh, good question. No, you did not lose your lead because all three hmm. of us so far have only gotten one game right. So the this, this scores actually stay the same. Oh, stay the stay same. The same. Hmm. Yeah, you just have a bunch of teams out, though, that you had going far. That's hmm. your problem. Dude doesn't have any Final Four teams and he's in the lead. We, I got we one. suck. He's got Duke. Okay. I got Duke. Yeah. Oh, okay, got you. Got the Flying Dukes. I'm hoping this thing at least comes down to the final four. I hate when like, like someone someone runs away with it and it gets clinched. Yeah, we don't want the Tiger at the we U.S. Open. That. Iowa State we got beat. Son of a bitch. So I've got two of my four out of this. So is, there, are, is the entire Big 12 now eliminated? Oh, no, Houston's Good. still in it. Houston's still in it. U of H, yeah, yeah. They're, they're Big 12 now. Now they are, saving the Big 12's butt. Dang it! Damn it, Iowa State. So there's there there's a there's the NCAA tournament report. <laughs> well, I'm brought up, to you by uh, hardcore college hoops talk. I'm up four hundred in real life, blackjack. Oh yeah. Oh, at a boy. Okay, well, tell us how Vegas is going. Yeah, I'm up four hundred, and which was huge, so I could get my family out off of my debit. I just handed that over to them <laughs> and said, "Leave me alone." Yeah. And so that's what they use today. Yeah, I got. I caught a, I got a good, you know, sometimes, you know, you get to a table and you've been to casinos. I know you've been to Vegas, LG. Yeah. I know LG. you get to a table with a good vibe and everybody's rooting for each other and third base is doing what they're supposed to do in third base at the blackjack table. And next thing you know, you get on a little run again. I'm not, it's a $10 table, so I'm not betting crazy. So 400, not a lot, but it's still a win. Hey, you're up, man. So, That's all yeah. Matters. So, Caught a table with a good vibe, had a couple hot hands, noticed I was up 400 and left. And they were like, that kind of pissed everybody at the table off. But I'm like, hey, man, I'm up 400. I'm not giving this shit back. I'm out. I'm not there. I'm not the guy that's like, oh, I'm going to go for I'm good going for, for 5,000. I'm like, nah, I'm out. Right. I'm up you're, a, you're a responsible man who's yeah. middle class in the family. <laughs> oh, cool, 400 bucks? <laughs> shit. Kingpin in the house. I'm out of here. Cash exactly. me out, boy. <laughs> now, let's see how long it takes me to give it back to him. We'll see. Well, all did, right. did you tip the dealer when you cashed out? Of course. I, I know a lot of people don't, but I was so what I do, LG, like every blackjack, I'll tip. And then I give a, I give a tip also when I leave the table. I, I believe in paying it forward. It comes back in the fold. Okay. I, I'll, I'll tip if I'm winning, you know, and yeah, I the table. Yeah, I don't yeah, tip yeah. every hand or every black. No, I don't tip, I tip every, every black. Nah, like, like well, no. So no, this is what will happen. Like, so like this is, so it's a $10 minimum. So when I was betting 15 and I would get paid on the blackjacks, she would give me that random bullshit ass dollar, like a white chip. Mm -hmm. I'd slide her those. When yeah, she ever, yeah, she yeah. gave me those white ones. That's, you know what what that's what they're for. Yeah, <laughs> so I slid in the white chips. I keep those. It's messing up my feng shui, the way my chips look. Is All there right. a percentage protocol, like when you're tipping a waiter? Like how, how many of those? I think because they, I think because they split it between every single dealer. Nobody gets oh. like, like I could hand her a thousand. She still got to spread it out to the it. entire dealer. So yeah, I don't know sucks. if there's a. I'm not doing. I don't know about the fifteen twenty percent. I just tip, and they're they're grateful. I wonder what they make an hour, like a season. I don't know. Like Jack Eagle in Vegas. I don't know. Hmm. I've seen a dude like make a killing at a table. I was in Lake Charles, made a killing at the table 
But according to him, he was still getting his ass handed to him over the weekend. And he didn't mm. tip, and the dealer told him some shit. Oh. And he, yeah, she, she was like, wow, no tip. All right, thank you, sir. He was like, I'm down for the weekend. And she was like, not at this table. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't matter, yeah. If you leave pl in the plus at a table, you tip that particular person. Yes, man. Hey, that yeah. just makes sense. That just That's just obvious. All right, subscribe to our show. It is absolutely free. We have memberships, but our subscriptions to the YouTube channel are absolutely free. Please subscribe to In the Building on YouTube. And, uh, Don't y'all want to see me with the George shows. Jefferson? Y'all get yes. us to 5,000. Y'all don't want to see me with the George Jefferson? Get the 5,000. Rudy's letting the hair grow out on the side only for a month. Well, this is the thing. Once we, get awesome. to about four, once we get to about 4,500, I'm just going to stop cutting my hair. So this way when we hit 5,000, I'll yeah. be ready to rumble. I'll get it cut. Yeah, I'll be ready to rumble. Oh, I like it. That's good. All right, y'all want to do the punch of the day. I've got a good one. Okay. Uh, presented by the Law Office of Orlando Kill, the official family lawyer of In the Building. Uh, I want to punch Draymond Green. Yeah, <laughs> I'm down. So, once again, he loses his shit in the game. And he's lucky he's a warrior. He plays for a progressive, very liberal organization in San Francisco, California. If his ass were an Orlando Magic, they probably would have dumped his ass already. Um, I'm not saying that he should have been dumped, but and I love the guy, and I've stood up for him for years. But they, that team, that you want him on your team. You want him on your team. Yeah, me too. I, Ooh, I want, we also. I want good Draymond. I mean, he's one of the all-time clutch winning time two-way performers, certainly in the last 20 years in the league. And it's just they've given him so many chances, and he gets thrown out of the game four minutes into a game the other night. Now the Warriors still find a way to upset the Magic. But at one point, Steph Curry was so pissed off, he was like damn near in tears on the court because it's like, here we go again. How many times are we going to go to bat for this dude? And he's getting long in the tooth. He's getting a gray beard. And at some point, it's like, well, these guys are getting older. How long are the Warriors going to put up with his shit? They've given him nine lives already. And not him. only that, it's like, and then he says, that can't happen. Dude, you've been saying that for a decade. Every time. We don't want to hear that shit, no. After a while, you get tired of hearing my bad, dude. Fix it. Yeah, especially at your age. You can. It's fine. It's cool to be responsible. And take and show culpability when you fuck up, but after the thirty seventh time, this is kind of who you are, dude. You know? Yeah, no, no, hear, there's no. We don't want to hear. It doesn't matter anymore. No, nah, there's no change in Draymond. But I, I, but the thing with Steph and being in tears, I don't know if that's Damn. like, is that him being like, okay, it's time for me to go. Or I don't did know. He, I just does, does he know something we don't know and that they oh. have a, an agreement that, you know, if this kept happening, that Draymond's gone and he's, I don't, that's a different type of frustration, especially when you're hanging around. You got to remember, this is a team that's won four titles together. Yeah. They're hanging around at the ninth seed, 10th seed. I'm, I think he's just at his, like, the point where it's like, dude, I'm done here. Yeah, I agree. Like, it may be time for me to pull a Dame Lillard and Anthony Davis and just go and ask them, hey, man, get me out of here. I don't want to spend – because Steph is old. He's not going to be LeBron. He's yeah. not going to be LeBron. His body isn't built that way. And do you want to finish out your career on a team that's hanging around the 10th seed? And the only reason why that's yeah. even relevant is because the NBA made up this weird-ass play-in situation. Right. No, I think the answer is no. He uh... – but he loves it up there. His wife and he, he and his wife have lived there his entire career. Their kids are being raised there. Mm -hmm. Not that he couldn't go spend a year in another town and let the kids stay in San Francisco. But yeah, I think it's just frustration, cool. pent up years of bullshit. And like you said, dude, God knows what we don't know. Look at look at what we do know. You imagine what they've been able to cover up, all the yeah. dust up that we don't know about. But, it's just weird because I always thought he would be Dirk. Tim, Kobe, and do one team his whole career, which is super rare. Yeah. Like Dirk, Tim, and Kobe, it's just that we're just, I mean, it's a new era, and I don't, you know, you just don't do that anymore in the NBA. So, but for him to be brought to tears was weird. And I want to know yeah. what brought him to tears. 
Yeah, something. It's 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 a shit's been piling and piling, and God knows what. You know, like, like I said, the stuff that we even know about. I mean, this is a dude who literally knocked the shit out of a teammate, and they get rid of that teammate, Jordan Poole, and keep you. You get uh, they suspend you already this season. You're going to counseling, and you still can't can't get through halfway through the first quarter. Yeah, so Steph is dealing enough. with Clay Thompson's washed. And Draymond is just lost. <laughs> and then you got a bunch of dudes that nobody knows. He yeah. realizes it's over. The yeah. run is over. I think it all hit him like a ton of bricks. Like, damn. Oh, maybe. Yeah. We're wild. It's over. Like, hey, they just won a title in 21. Yeah, 21. Whatever it was. Yeah. They just won one over and they beat Boston. Yeah. But I think he realizes it's over. Yeah. San Antonio has enough cap room to take on his deal. Come on, come play, come finish out with Wimby. He needs some help. Yeah, bring Steve Kerr with you. Run Pop's ass to the front office. Damn, that'd be awesome. Have Steph for a year or two. Groom Trey Jones or whoever else they go draft with their. Well, why stop picks. there? That'd take be cool. LeBron, draft Bronny. <laughs> Let's just go full blown oh. circus in this bitch. I was gonna mention that. I was gonna mention this. Uh, yeah, last show. Did you see where USC's coach is leaving to go to SMU? Interesting. Yeah, I think it's Andy Enfield. So my my response to that is, did Bronny sign with USC mostly because he wanted to stay home? Or did he sign with USC because he really, really liked Andy Enfield? If Enfield's going to go to SMU, might Bronny consider transferring? And would he follow Enfield to Dallas and go play at SMU? Because they're getting ready to play. They're getting ready to go to the ACC, SMU. Is. Mm, that's right. They're paying to leave. Yeah. I wonder why the USC coach would leave USC for SMU. Strange. SMU's got lots of money, and they're going to the ACC next year. Well, doesn't Chance. the universe – well, USC's going to the Big Ten. I know. I don't know. The university is spoiled children. Yeah, SMU's got shit tons of money. They've they been able to get a, They've got collectives, man. Yeah. And thank God they're leaving SMU because they have so much money. It's not fair. I mean, it's, I mean, it's, it's fair because they got the money, but it sucks for the other teams in that conference like UTSA. SMU's going to leave after one year being in, in the same conference as UTSA. So SMU will be on to the ACC, which is good. And they've got so much money in their collective. I bet Enfield's getting God knows how much money and shit tons of incentives. And he's probably got kids that he knows that are going to transfer there, like maybe Bronny. So watch out for That's SMU, it. man. Okay. I'll keep that on my radar. I didn't think yeah, about that. Yeah, watch out for him. All right. What else today? Um, um, I guess we can I got a Andrew. punch. Oh, 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 my bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get a punch in. Who you got? I got one punch. All right. I got to punch the Rio Casino and Hotel where I'm staying. Mm. Man, so last night I'm at the I'm at the blackjack table. Everything's going well. They got the free drinks or whatever. Mm -hmm. Dude sitting next to me. All of a sudden, I'm not paying attention. I'm locked in because I'm trying to get a little bit of money. I smell I like, damn, it smells like a cigarette. I look to my left. Dude sitting next to me has sparked up a cigarette. Oh. And I'm like, that's strange. But then... So after I was gonna play, I had already I had my cigar with me. I was gonna go out to the little the little weirdo people section and go smoke a cigar for a little bit. But when I saw him spark his cigarette, I was like, "Well, shit! I had no idea. It's lit." I go to I go to light my cigar, and the dealer's like, "No, there's no, you can't smoke the cigar." I was like, hmm. "But," and I look at my man. I'm like, "But he's she's like cigarettes are fine." What? I swear to God, if I'm lying, I'm flying. Wow! You can you can light up a Newport menthol at the fucking table inside the hotel, but not a cigar or a pipe cigar. That doesn't make sense. Exactly. I swear, if I'm, I'll, you know what? Tonight, if I go down and play tonight, I'll take a picture of it and send it to y'all. All right. I was gonna ask what color the guy was, but then you let you already tell me without telling come, me. Come on, man. Come on, man. Come on, man. Do we really got to discuss we, this? We know who smokes Newports. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I was like, yo. I was like, oh, cool. So I pull out my cigar all cool. She's like, that's bullshit. Sa, 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 no cigar. 
Wow. Right. That's cray cray. Yeah. Where was your dealer from? Was she from Vietnam with that accent? <laughs> I didn't even. <laughs> I knew that was coming. God almighty. Yes, LG sir. punching anybody? Uh, yeah, Lalo. I want to punch San Antonio water systems. Oh, oh Saws. LG always goes after the big dogs. What Let's you got? What does Saws do to you? I don't know who the CEO is, but I'm for the last that. two days, my water pressure has been a slow trickle. Like, I can't even get the dirt off me when I take a shower. It's so bad. What? what? They're doing some fucking work down the street, and they didn't give us no warning. Like, no email. Should I get a <laughs> refund or something? Like, come on. <laughs> My water's not so what are you doing? the Going way it should be. Showering or what? Nah, I mean, I, I fight through mats. it. I fight through it, but it's it's just not good. You know, no, like the shampoo's you. like, I got to like rinse for like 30 minutes to get the shampoo out of my hair. And I don't even have hair. Hard water or soft water? Or it's just a low trick. It's a slow trick. It's just low pressure. pressure. Super, super low pressure. Interesting. I wonder if they're I, working yeah. on the pipes in your hood. They are. I just said okay. that they're working. Oh, dude, down that's down the I'm drinking. Yeah. Uh, like low, low <laughs> pressure is almost as bad as not having it, it's like hot water. It's really it's annoying. Worst. Yeah, it's the worst, dude. Like it's annoying as shit. Like showers are therapeutic for me. You know, I like to <laughs> sit there and after a long day on the softball field. You know. <laughs> yeah. And I can't do no. that now. I got to sit there and get dripped on. It's gross. It is. All right. So you're punching something called Liz Teats. <laughs> Are you what? serious? Liz Teats. <gasps> is that the CEO of Sauce? Yeah. Uh, she spells you can milk Teats. With nipples. Okay. T E I T Z. Teats. You That's do. how I read that. <laughs> yeah. Tets. Yo. Maybe Tets. Liz Just tights. remember who you are. This will get back to Sauce. Remember who you I are. I hope so. Fix this no, shit. I'm talking about Mike making- <laughs> oh, I don't know. I'm just I'm, no, I'm trying to guess what the name is. I don't know. I think it's Teats. Hey, I hope it does get back so LG can get some of his money back on his next bill. Yeah, come on, Liz. This Her salary is six hundred thousand dollars. I'm sure it is. Jesus Christ. Didn't Good. didn't Chief McManus wasn't he the CEO of Salts for like a week? No, I think he was head of security for like oh, okay. a year. Let's not talk about that. Yeah, well, you I'm sure he doesn't want to talk about that. Why? I don't know. I don't know what. I don't know. No, he ain't my boy. No, he ain't my homie. I mean, he, he, he was on. The, he was on the show a long time ago. Yeah, he's Mike Taylor's own. We played he bong sound Taylor. effects while he was on the air. Well, you fired off a bong sound effect talking to the chief. Wow. No, it, it was weird. He he did like a Michael Jordan thing where he was he retired, went away for a year or so, work head of security for CPS. It was CPS, I think. Oh, okay. One then all of a sudden he comes out of retirement and takes right slides right back over into the chief's chair. What? I, I, I always question that. No, I, that I don't weird, know anybody right? else that did. It was very strange how that worked out. Very weird. And he's been back on the job for 10 years or whatever. It's been a while. So no no I no disrespect to Liz Teets. I mean sometimes you have an unfortunate name. You'd have to own it. If you're if you're gonna be named Teets, you wind up you ought to be the CEO of something when you get older to make up for it. Well, she's What's over, her name? She's over Liz Teets. Teets. Liz Teets. T-E-T-Z? Maybe that's her husband's name. Yeah. T E I T Z. Teets. Teets. Liz Teets. Yeah, that's it's gotta teets. be not Teets. Gotta be teets. teets. Uh Jewish? it's not it's not it's not funnier than the dude who pinch hit for the Cubs tonight against the Rangers. What's his name? Miles Mastroboni. No, it's not. No, it is not. Yeah, it you're is. Make, you're doing a bit. Baby, didn't I laugh my ass off when Miles Mastroboni came to bat? I like I literally <laughs> rolled to the floor laughing. There is no way that there's an ancestor last name Mastroboni. Miles Mastroboni, Chicago Cubs. Look at that. That's Master unfortunate. Bo- Bo- well, I'm glad. How, you, how do you pronounce that? That's not Master Boney. Boney. No, it's Master Boney. It's Mastro Boney. Yeah, Master yeah. Boney. Mastro. It's on Mastro, the broadcast. Not they Master. said Master Boney. 
Oh, you, when you say it fast, it's Mastroboni. Mastroboni. So it sounds oh. like master, but it's Mastro. Mastro. I'm glad he made it to the pros because I know he had a rough childhood. Oh, he, but he kicked ass at baseball, so I'm sure he got shit though in high school for sure. Junior high, big time. Yeah, yeah Rudy, Rangers. Rudy. Born. Rudy's not a good name for kids. Really? No, dude, I got killed. Rudy Tootie, fresh and fruity, went outside, smelled like booty. The whole <laughs> shit. Yeah, like my entire elementary, dude. I just spent like half of my recesses chasing kids trying to kick their ass for saying that shit. Rudy smells like booty. That's funny. Yeah. Yeah, dude. Yeah, I like that. Rudy Tootie, <laughs> fresh and fruity, smells like booty. Funny. <laughs> No, it's not. It's <laughs> oh, man. That's good shit. Yeah. All right. We got to do the old Orlando Kell live spot here. <laughs> I thought we did. Yeah. We're going to wind up doing two hours. No, if you, if, no. if, if you're that? getting divorced and you know it, call Orlando. <laughs> if your wife's a big bitch and you bust your caught, caught her cheating, call Orlando. Biatch. If your wife's a fucking bitch and she needs to get in the ditch and you don't want to kill her, you want to do it legally, call Orlando. The official family lawyer of in the building is Orlando Kale. Hit him up, 210-775 or 775-4995, or you can directly email this man at OrlandoKaleLaw at gmail.com. OrlandoKaleLaw at gmail.com. If you're sad and you know it, call Orlando. If you need a decent Thunderdomer because your wife's a whore and you got to get divorced, call Orlando. It's seven seven five forty nine ninety five, or email him at OrlandoKillLaw at gmail.com. You're not mad. I'm at not me. mad. I'm not mad at the jingle. We're 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 you know we're we're trying things in two K twenty four. We're throwing darts, seeing what hits. That's what we're doing. <laughs> All right, you got video of me, Helms. Do that ever come through? We good to go? Uh, I got it on on Twitter. Okay, so Hell this is, uh, and I've given him permission to run this because this is me. All right, so uh, let me cue it. Okay, um, tell me when I can stop. I, I can, I can, let me set this up. So, um, we got a longtime Thunderdomer called Josh Rodriguez. He's a longtime San Antonio firefighter. Okay. And reached out to me and invited me to come in for a tour. He wanted you to come, but you had a flight. You don't have um, to lie. He didn't invite me. Yeah, he did. Oh, there's no, oh, they're all hype, dude. They all when I got there, like, dude, they were all high fiving because you've joined the show. Awesome. Though, the ones that knew us, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's something. Half, dope. half the crew did. Here's one photo. So Let me see. I went there just to hang oh, out. That's dope. They said if you come to the house, we'll buy tickets. And so I went to the firehouse and it turned into a full blown. I was probably there, dude, an hour and a half. I had so much fun. What? I felt like a kid again, and I got to not only I got to do more than just put on the suit. Is if you're watching this, you're seeing photos of me with the boys here in front of the truck, and then there's me getting the gear on. I was feeling like a badass putting that gear on. And I tell you what, I, I don't take that lightly. By the way, I, I, it's funny. Like I don't like to wear first responder stuff. Like I'm wearing their t-shirt tonight, but I don't I don't want to get. Like I, I, it's weird. Like I don't wear soldier stuff. I don't wear cop shirts because that I didn't, that's not me. I didn't do that. I, I didn't, I didn't, I'm not a first responder, but anyway, they're like, dude, quit being silly. Put the shit on. Matter of fact, this is the captain's gear that I got to put on and it felt like a total stud and it turned into a workout, man. So part of my workout before don't roll the video yet, LG part of my workout with the guys, they took me on the back and I had. Oh, sh shut up, Siri, you dumb, stupid idiot. Yeah, okay, sorry, Siri, Siri's trying to follow. Why does that this stupid computer picks me up? Um, so I, they took me on the back. Oh, my God. Can y'all hear her talking? Mm -mm. Shut up. Okay. So they took me on the back. They gave me this huge hose filled with sand. I had to load it over my shoulder and haul that damn thing about 30 yards. That's that was heavy. Dude, crazy, and it's just dead ass weight. And you got and the then, suit on, right? Which is probably what 20, suit, 30 pounds? 70 pounds. The suit is 70 pounds? Well, because they put the oxygen oxygen tank on me. So well, I had see, the I tank and the, the whole mat. You've got to come back with me. Yeah. You got the tank, 
had the, the oxygen mask on. The tank itself is 30 pounds. The, 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 the rest of it's 40, and the boots are huge. Not only, and I, so I did, the, I did the thing where I had to pull the, the sandbag and the hose. Then I had to hold a 45-pound weight over my head with my helmet on and then walk like, you know, 30 feet or whatever, or 30 yards like that. And then they, had, they have this mock windowsill that you have to jump into. Now, mind you, it's 70 pounds of gear. I'm 49 years old, and I don't normally jump in windows. So do you have the video, LG? This is me. I didn't quite make it. They had to help me. So this is me at the, at, at, with the boys of SAFD helping my ass. Literally, he had to, get, he had to push my – you'll see. You'll see right here as I try to get to the window. My fat ass can't get through that. All right, roll that tape. One more time. One more time. I know go. my limitations. Mike can't even breathe. There you go. There you go, 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 Mike. Go, Mike. Yeah, don't they had to bail me out. Hey, they tush push me like Jalen Hurts. Yeah, I got Jalen Hurts. Oh, shit. One more time. One more time. All right, watch it again. He's all out of breath and shit. There you go. There you go, Mike. Nope. Duck right there. Oh, 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 oh. Tush pushed. No <laughs> fear for somebody. Oh, shit. That's awesome, man. Yeah, so that's, that's, awesome. that's, my, that's my buddy Josh who came running over. That's He's like, he goes, he, goes, he goes, now search for somebody. So, so imagine, like, you're jumping into a house, it's on fire. It's hard enough just to get in the damn window. You get in there. Okay, now find survivors and don't and all and keep your cool about you the whole time, knowing that you could die. Dude, Dude. this is the thing. This is the thing. I can count on one hand how many people I go into a burning building for. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Do you, you, yeah. you feel where I'm coming from? Yeah. That's can, a, that's a different yeah. type of job. Yep. It's different. And okay, I already knew that, dude, but hanging out with the guys and talking to everybody and getting the tour and hearing stories, some of that, a lot of it off the record. I mean, I already knew I had a respect for firefighters anyway, who doesn't, Right. but hanging out with those boys and just chopping it up and talking about stuff. I have a whole new respect for the firefighter, man. So let me, let me tell the quick story. So the shout out, this is, this is the legendary Animal House of San Antonio. Are this you allowed one to the, tell this story? This ain't off the record. Well, I'm about to tell the stuff that's that's good. Yeah, yeah, okay, I, cool. yeah, yeah. This is on the record. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All so, right, cool. no. So this is the legendary Animal House. Uh, it's the it, it's a hundred. It, the, the this station was built in 1914, and so it's obviously one of the oldest ones we have in town. Half that building is the original structure from when they built it in 1914 and had and used horses to carry their engine, which wow. wasn't an engine, but it was a horse. And this is the very and, and all firefighters are aware of house number nine because it's been there so long. And it's also East Side, baby. Shout out to Animal House number nine, East San Antonio. Such a cool thing. A guy called Josh Rodriguez. So, and I, it's funny because it's like, I, I don't, I didn't think firefighters were meatheads or nothing, but I got to tell you, I was so impressed by these kids. Josh is 45 and he's by, he's the oldest guy. And he's the oldest guy in, in that you know, among the crew, everybody else is, you know, in their twenties. I was so impressed with these kids, man. They, they're just on an, on an intellectual basis, just chopping it up with these guys and talking fire and talking San Antonio and East side and, you know, they, they, their shift and what it's like to be sleep deprived and the whole training process and the technology involved. So not only did they let me do the physical workout, they let me get up on the, on the engine. And I got to, I got to raise the truck up because like, You'll, every once in a while, you'll see them have to raise the truck up off the ground. They have these giant ass metal feet that come out and pop, stick to the street and literally jack the entire fire truck up in the air because it keeps it steady when they put the ladder up. Because mm. when you put the ladder up, like in an apartment fire, you can't have it on tires. It's got to have those giant metal compressions because the truck will wobble. Wow. Because that ladder is so heavy. 
and like when you get the ladder and you like move the ladder and it's like brrr, and it goes up and it goes up you don't you can't have the truck wobbling with guys on that ladder man so i got to go up on the truck and initiate the ladder under their tight supervision of course put the clamps down pop raise the truck in the air bring the ladder up and then move the ladder over to my right hand side and then and then raise it up it was up it was up over 100 feet so now not only you want me to go into a burning building but you want me to do it from 100 feet no no, no. he asked me do you want to no no ladder? i'm saying I, I'm, just saying, I'm talking about the job oh right oh yeah the job you oh yeah yeah now right, right. in 70 pounds of gear climb up 100 some odd feet on a ladder into an apartment and go rescue somebody's baby or their dogo or whatever you know or, it's just or or 9-11 and you're going up 110 stories Can you imagine that man God, no. dude and again you know I just, you're not coming back you know you're not and for probably not thinking about 9-11 you know you're not yeah, coming back probably not man probably not so and they actually told me a story a firefighter did lose his life in that firehouse in 1962 or 63 okay. they have a plaque there so they have two old school poles that slide down from the top story and apparently one of the guys was sweeping one day and wasn't paying attention back in the early 60s and fell through the the hole where the sliding pole is and fell to his death Shit. i mean that's a hundred year old building there it's over it's 110 years old this year and so the the stories just of that firehouse alone are awesome and again i just it's not like I was expecting to hang out with a bunch of idiots, but just, I was so just intellectually impressed with these kids. And these are, you know, you know, when we start worrying about new generations of people in this country, go hang out with a bunch of 25 year old firefighters for two hours and it'll warm your heart and make you, it gives you hope for the future. I mean, one of the Cheers. guys on this crew, one of the guys on the crew, uh, who I'm now buddies with on Instagram. He's a very, very good artist. I should share uh, some of his art with LG. Maybe we'll put it up next week. So he makes all the art for the firehouse, but he's so good, dude. He has like his uh, he has paintings in like the National Firefighters Museum. He's so good, and he's the one that he he and a couple of other guys walk me through how to engage the engine, the ladder, move it. It's all it's all you know. It's all digital now. And yes, LG. I actually digitally raised a fire truck ladder. <laughs> no way. <laughs> and actually pulled it off and no one got hurt. And it was just, they're just, just impressive dudes. And it just put my, trying to put myself in their hands and their heads. Um, they, they pulled out, they pulled out. I got to handle the jaws of life. So there's three different ones. So there's one that has like a hook, like, like it has like a sharp hook at the end to tear shit. You know, there's another one that like pulls parts this way, you know, perpend, I guess like, you know, uh, horizontal. horizontal. And then there's another one that pushes, it pushes metal. And they were saying that the, the jaws of light that they actually use the most is the one that pushes because so many times they'll go to a car wreck and the dashboard is caved in on the poor person's legs Jesus. and so they have to stick this massive piece of metal in there which is you know six 75 pounds in and of itself in the gear hold that thing get the right spot you have a person maybe dying right next to you who's in the head and this person is in the massive car wreck chaos everywhere and they have to push the car off this person's legs you know and it's just just trying to do that and keep your composure, keep your heart rate where it should be. It's yeah, just try to keep the victim calm. Correct. And just this entire, the entire 90 minutes I was there, I was just like a kid again and just could not have been just more impressed with these kids. So shout out to the animal house, baby. East side repping animal house, firehouse, number nine on the East side, right there in the heart of the East side too. And, um, uh, Shout out to those guys for letting me come back. And then they, there's a, they want you to come. They want you to go to with or without me. They want, they want to show you around too, man. I ain't jumping through that window, but I'll go. <laughs> dude, that I, 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 that was actually the second attempt. And like the first one, it was so failed. 
that I was, I, I didn't want to, you know, me, I'm competitive, but I, but I, I it's funny because my competitiveness, it went away around these cats. I mean, because you know, I mean, oh, I, come on, 26 year old badasses. You know, I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to outdo these kids. I know my limitations and I gave it a good second try. So with a little tush push, we, uh, we got through the window. Good times, man. Uh, LG Is that could that get same bu- yeah. I could get through there easily. I'm sure. No, yeah. no. Okay. That, that, you say that, that now. 70 pounds would weigh me down. I probably couldn't even hop. Like, <laughs> uh, he's like my man from Ocean no. 11 to 12. We I was going to say, is that. that is that that same bottle of Lalo or did you get another one? <laughs> oh, hell no. It's the same one. Don't do me like that. I ain't that no, much. Okay. Right, right, right. <laughs> Just wondering. Just wondering. No, it's the same one. Oh, Thank good you. times. So this is their shirt right here. All right. Y'all want to get into entertainment news? We'll do it real quick. Brought, right. brought to you by Texas Cheer. Let's do it. Uh, Damn, that was a Bro. Draw. All right, 50 Cent is being accused of rape. No. By his ex-girlfriend. No, no you're talking about Diddy, not 50. I know, 50 Cent's in the news. What did 50 do? He noted rapper 50 Cent. Well, he's decided Don't to go to war me. with... He's it's going to war day. with the uh, mother of one of his sons. This is his, his second son. She Daphne has come out. Joy. Daphne. She has accused Fitty of raping her on social media. She posted this and he got pissed. So he shares a 12 year old kid with this girl, Daphne. And of course, Diddy's, by the way, you mentioned, I mean, uh, 50's related. 50's got a connection to this Diddy saga. Bad boy. The Rodney, the Rodney Jones lawsuit claims that Daphne, 50's baby mama, is a former sex worker who worked for bad boy whorehouse. <laughs> if indeed he was running a cat house. So this lawsuit says Daphne actually used to work and escort with men for Diddy. She has that- a kid with 50 Cent, and now she's accused 50 Cent of raping her, if all that makes sense. God, lay it's hard to cover. Well, she has to do that because 50 seeking custody because of her involvement with this. And let right. me tell you something. Let me tell you something about Daphne. Fact. What they're, I don't, look, I don't know her role mm-hmm. in Diddy's house. But she did a lot for Diddy. Are you saying now, she was like a madam? I'm not saying she was a worker. I'm not saying she was a madam, but I'm saying what Diddy told her to do, she would do. Was she have that, is a was fa- she- that is a fact. That is a fact. That is a fact. So was she the what like saying, head of scouting or whatever? I'm not saying she's a madam. I'm just saying if Diddy said, okay. hey, I want you to do, I want you to sleep with him or I want you to sleep with her, she did that shit. Okay. I know that. That's a fact. And so now that 50 finds this out, he's like, oh, well, okay, well, my 25K a month that I send you, I can end that shit and take our son because you're yeah. a sex worker. So in turn, Daphne comes out. Well, you ready? Right. right. Well, 50 Cent, well, Curtis Jackson's his name. He's been so. I'm sure his lawyers are not thrilled, but he decided to go on to Twitter and throw her under the bus, which he should not hey, be doing. Twirl. He's been on her all day today on the gram. He's been destroying her on the gram, like to the Damn. point to level to cornball levels. Like, I mean, you've been knowing this. You know she's been hanging out at Diddy's house for forever. Yeah. Like she wasn't going over there doing gardening. You've been knowing this. You've been knowing this. He posted. I didn't know. He gets on my nerves. He's he's annoying as fuck. Fifty's annoying. But I mean, he's having he's making children with women who do shit like this. I mean, (laughs) he wrote, "I didn't know you was a sex worker." With the little uh, staring eyes emoji, you little sex worker. LOL. She replied, "Let's put the real focus on your true evil actions of raping me and physically abusing me." And so then the lawyers obviously got a hold of 50 Cent. They're like, yo, dude, 
So then 50 released a long statement later, part of which read, The disturbing allegations and the sworn pleadings recently filed in a court case related to Daphne Joy, the mother of my 12-year-old child, has required me to take all necessary legal actions to protect my son's sire. So then we so we get, I didn't know you was a sex worker, LOL, followed by, the actions of Daphne Joy are in un, un, untenable. Therefore, I shall be seeking custody. I mean, come on, dude. Like, that's what happens when you act like a child on social media. Like, yeah. again, like, like, you know, it happens. Like, you, yeah. you, pick the, you pick the wrong chick to be the mother of your kids. And maybe she picked the wrong dude to be the mother of her kid. But regardless, y'all both picked the wrong person. And this is the type of shit that happens. Meanwhile, but 50, did he, 50's uh, annoying as fuck, bro. Really? I'm you don't sorry. like him like, personally? I know. I love 50. And that's what I'm saying. He's above this. Like, he's been, he's posted, mm. he posted about her, like, at least seven times today. Oh, come on, man. Like, seriously. Must he's be hurt. Good. He's hurt. When you, I mean, finding out the mother of your child has been passed around Diddy's Casa. Like, literally, listen to me. Look at me. Where's the camera? Literally passed around Casa de Diddy. <laughs> Hey, try not to suck any dick like a bl parking lot. Like a blunt. <laughs> like a blunt. Like a blunt. Like, yep. oh. Like, you find out, you find out the mother of your children being passed around Diddy's house, it hurts. Yeah. He's hurt. All right, so just trying to keep up with all of the different Diddy fallout. Mm hmm So he has a stepson. Mm-hmm. Um, named Quincy. Quincy's yes. biological father is the legendary um, R&B singer, I'll be sure. Yes. And apparently Quincy, the stepson, has been estranged, kind of separated from his dad, from Al. From Al. Yeah, because Al, so, Al fell on hard times, didn't have any money, and when Diddy married, Al be yeah. sure his former baby mama, Quincy's mama, Diddy assumed the role of his father because Al Beach fell on hard times. He signed a bad record deal never got paid mm -hmm. for his records so did he took over uh there's a lot of daphne's in the hip-hop world it looks like in the world period they have baby that have babies with all these famous rappers and shit so you got a kid with i'll be sure you're married to diddy i mean and good for her that's, that's 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 road lizard hall of fame shit right there but She's no longer with us because she was gonna write a tell-all book. Whoa! How she? How is she no longer with us? They say the flu. Whoa! So the mother is gone. Kim Porter, who he shared, who did he shares three ki kids with, a yeah. set of twins, Christian, and a stepson in Quincy. Wow! She is. She passed away a couple years ago from. Wow unspecified flu like symptom random out the blue reasons something is super well, healthy here. super healthy woman super in shape uh, beautiful woman damn. all of a sudden all of oh. a sudden gone well al is trying to Just reconcile saying. with his son al has reached out on what he said. social media he he posted to his son come home the door is wide open you are safe here son Al also told Quincy he loved him, but appeared to fire a subliminal at Diddy with his sign-off and wrote, I love you, Pops. You're biological. Yeah, and then he tagged Diddy. He just wrote, I love you from Pops. You're biological. Come home. The door is always open. Eesh. Not well, good. Being a... There's, a, there's deadbeats dads and then there's broke dads i've been I've, i was a broke dad my oldest yeah i was broke but yeah. i wasn't a deadbeat now i don't Correct. know if i be i don't know if i'll be sure it was a deadbeat or he was just broke there's a huge difference you know what i'm saying does that make sense yeah. of course absolutely it makes a ton of sense okay. you know so meanwhile i, I don't know suge knight Continues to fire what? off opinions about people from the Where prison. Where is Suge? Ain't Suge in San Quentin or some shit? Where I guess he's Shug? got a he's got a podcast. I guess they have the podcast no, studio inside doesn't. the prison. <laughs> no, he doesn't. Suge no, is kicking doesn't. Diddy while he's down. What happened? So the most credible news source in America, TMZ, has obtained a new commentary from Suge 
says we're told it's an outtake from his co- from his collect call podcast he does from inside the jail. The death row founder is clearly convinced his longtime rival is destined for prison. Okay. Shug says his thoughts and prayers are with Diddy's kids, partic- particularly Justin and King, who were being the ones we saw being detained the other day at the mansion. Shug says the allegations against Diddy made in several civil lawsuits are ugly stains for hip hop and black culture because of how beloved Diddy is by black America. Like you were saying last night, See what I'm saying, and Shug is suggesting Diddy just turn it, turn himself over to authorities, admit to everything and try to play out. Yo, misery loves company, right? Like, yeah, bitch, man. I'm not about to stop fighting for my freedom. Fuck you. Shug. <laughs> Like, what are you talking about turning myself in? I'm not just turning myself in. You have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can and will be used to get you in the court of law. Y'all going to have to prove it. Even if I did that shit, Mike, you're going to have to prove it in the court of law. Suge went into a bunch of details about his issues with Diddy over the years and, and, and his issues with Jermaine Dupree, the badass producer. Love Jermaine Dupree. So Shug had a friend called Big Jake who got murdered in Atlanta in 1995. And Shug has been beefing with Puffy and Diddy or whatever the hell you call him these days and Jermaine Dupree ever since. They feel like they were to blame. Mm, didn't know this. So Shug believes Diddy, Diddy was kind of beyond, behind the murder of his buddy. Now, there were there long people that thought Diddy was kind of behind the Tupac murder too for the longest time, which that's that's been disproven now with the actual truth come out. Right. Damn. These are it's old. Been, these are guys our age and older beefing like they're eighteen. This Mike, is ridiculous. Ain't it embarrassing? It's ridiculous. It's embarrassing, dude. That's why I was saying. And I'm. I mean, first of all, Suge's an embarrassment also, but. That's exactly what I said last night. Exactly what I said. Like, damn, man. It's always something. Yeah. What are you drinking? Malalo? No additives, baby. We're going to make a little beer tonight. You can get both both of of these. Both Both purchased at Texas Cheer Liquor. That's right. Whether you need tequila, when we're known for our tequila uh, section at all the Texas Cheers. Vodka, rum, wine, cognac, Asian booze, got what? it all. Urban what? Sake, sake. We got sake and soju. No, soju. The soju. Yeah. Every sake, every military. Sake to me. I, yeah, I know when this military personnel, because they they used to get into soju in Korea when they stationed there. Yeah. The only thing is, we don't have the same prices as Korea's soju. But we still got the soju, and we got all flavors. Soju, I believe, is the is the most popular, most drank alcoholic beverage on earth. So no you, way. I'm pretty sure. Look that up. I believe that's it a, is. That's, that's a hell of a fun fact, sir. Most consume alcoholic beverage on earth is soju, sake. That is a hell of a fun fact. Yeah, soju and sake are not the same thing. Oops. No. Time out. Time out. Uh, what's the name? What's the brand? Cripes. What's that generic brand of sake that Texas Cheer has? It has a little red label. It's I like a little jar. Yeah, it's not soju. Hey, that's Korean. My bad. LG. It's yeah. just a little. It's a little jar of sake. It's red. What the hell is it I'm called? I'm talking when I when you said soju, I thought you were talking about the green bottle with the different flavors. I was okay. What is the okay. the most popular the sake? I don't brand. know which sake. But anyway, we got it, and it's the most popular booze on earth, that particular brand of sake. I got to get some sleep, man. I'm tired. All right, man. Well, let's get some sleep. (laughs) All right. You got another long day tomorrow? Yeah. All right, man. Long day today, long day tomorrow, long day Saturday. But it's all worth it. When are you home? Next Thursday. Damn, man. And so when do you leave Vegas? Sunday. So four or five days in Valdosta, Georgia. Dude. Dude. Start researching for me. Let me know where to go. I Let will. me know where not to go. All right. I can do that. Are you, you taking the uh, wife and kids with you to Georgia too? No, or are they going back home? No, okay. no. Who wants to go to No. Oh. 
They're going yeah, to San Sunday. We're going to the airport same time. They're going to San Antonio. Okay, I'm headed cool. to I'm headed to Georgia. So you only had to get babysat in Vegas. That makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. We're done. God Almighty. Y'all get some sleep. Love you hard. Thanks, LG. Thanks, Rudy. Look at that. Shout out. Adios from Vegas. We'll see y'all in here on Monday. Love you hard. What's up? I'm out of booze. Yeah. This program was made possible by contributions from viewers and listeners like you. Thank you. You're still here? It's over. Go home. Go.